Hello everyone, uh, today we have another road trip. Uh, this is going to be a rather big one. Um, basically I'm going to go from Saint Nazaire, where I'm living at the moment, all the way to Budapest and back. Um, it's going to be over 10 days, so it's not just like a race or something, but it's still a relatively short time to do around 4,000 kilometers. Um, so, so I'm here in, in Saint Nazaire. Actually, you have, um, if you saw the thumbnail, uh, you saw in the back of the thumbnail some weird things. They are actually rotors of giant offshore windmills. Um, they are being installed just, just out here. I'm going to see those from my window probably. Uh, basically, they are those those um, rotors you could see. They are six megawatts each, so they can charge at 1000 EVs at 6 kilowatt at the same time. This is this kind of power and basically they install 80 of those and they will be able to, to give the power for 300,000 people. So that's a massive project. It was a project was announced years ago, but it was delayed several times, uh, but it's quite exciting to see this happening, especially it's, it's really here locally. So it's quite cool. And just to give you um, an idea of the of the size the the blades are 180 meters each and if you think the tallest building in Ireland Dublin I think it's 70 between 70 and 80 meters that that would be the highest buildings we have in Ireland so that's bigger than much bigger than a building and it's just one blade the whole thing is over 20 meters high anyway um, back to a road trip uh, so I'm actually going to cheat a bit uh, because I'm going to travel in three or even four times to Budapest. So first uh, I'm going to go to the city tonight and I'm going to actually work Wednesday and I'm working on Thursday. Um, I'm working from home so that's that's easy for me. I'm going to go from now to tomorrow. Uh, but again I'm not going from now to Geneva in one go because I'm going to go in the evening and I'm gonna travel uh, for about four hours and stay at some family and then most of the trip to Geneva will be on the Friday so it's kind of cutting it but to make it a bit to spice things up a bit I decided to go from here to Geneva so that's that's 800 something kilometers and because it takes me a bit of time I'm gonna go it on AC only and I'm gonna prove you that even on AC, if you organize yourself correctly, even if you have a vehicle that doesn't charge very quickly, you can still do long trips, but you have to do, to do it with a different rhythm and you have to make sure you charge all the time, etc. But I just want to show you this. So we'll say it works out. That's my own challenge. Then for the next day, that's going to be the next Monday, I will drive from Geneva to Budapest. That's 1200 kilometers more or less and maybe a bit more, but I'll do it only on, on DC chargers because I want to do this on one day and 1200 kilometers is a lot even with a Tesla. Uh, so we'll see that. That's going to be a di different episode and maybe I'll do another one on the, for the trip back because I don't know what I'm going to do. I haven't done much planning because of all this COVID. Uh, I think I should be able to, to travel across. So we are at the end of July right now and I've been fully vaccinated for over two weeks, so I've got my, uh, my my pass, so I should be able to travel around Europe, but you never know. I might change plans and I haven't booked anything, actually. I'm just going to improvise. So I should go to Budapest and back at this time, but maybe that's not what I'm going to do. Um, so I'm going to show you the status now. Uh, so here in my apartment, unfortunately, I do not have a charge point. So because there's one in the city and my family where I'm staying tonight, I usually, if I go there, I usually don't charge because I don't look for chargers around here and actually I just have 21 person to do whatever 60 odd kilometers to get there so I will arrive there quite empty and because I'm charging very slowly there when I go tomorrow on my four-hour trip I'm not even sure I'm gonna get a full charge by the time I have to go so we'll see that tomorrow and tonight anyway so we have 21 person I just reset my uh, trip computer uh, the Budapest trip that's what I'm gonna show you in a minute and um, Let's see how it goes. So we are leaving Saint Nazaire now. As you can see, I just reset this. I'm going to show you this screen over the trip. 
I'm not lying, I have 21% left. Uh, I'm not sure what it is in uh, uh, kilometers. Why do I change this? Uh, that would be in display. Distance that gives me 87 kilometers. And I've got to think 60 something, maybe 70 kilometers. So that should be fine. And um, yeah, so that's it. And just to give you an idea. Since I got the car, I did only 2,000 kilometers. I only consume 14.3 kilowatt hours per kilometer, per 100 kilometers. That is quite low. We're in summer. It's quite warm. As you can see, it's 29 right now in the car. Well, outside the car, even though we're in the shade, we're in the covered car park here. It's over 30 uh, outside. So the batteries are at, at very good temperature. And uh, even if I use air conditioning, the 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 economy is, is amazing, I have to say. Um, over winter, with the previous one, uh, the previous Model 3, the average consumption I had was about 170 watt hour per kilometer. Kilometer, sorry. So um, much higher than what you see right now. But honestly, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna have very low consumption, I think, over this trip. Um, this is since my last charge. You see. Um, consumption 13.3 and I'm not sparing the car and I'm doing I'm taking dual carriage ways I'm not sparing the car at all um, I might spare it at some stage during this trip but on a daily basis I'm not so I was just wanted to show you this uh, so let's go and let's see when we arrive in Nantes So this is day two. Um, I'm all charged up, 99 percent. See, I just lost a percent. Uh, I did a lot of preconditioning. The car wasn't plugged already, but I managed to 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 charge fully. Uh, so uh, car is loaded. Um, car is recharged. This is 20 percent I should have left when I arrive in the destination. This is 265 kilometers in three hours. 29 doesn't seem to be very fast to do 265 kilometers. Unfortunately, when you go in France from um, from west to east or vice versa, you don't have that many motorways. So I only have like maybe a third of the route being a motorway, and then the two thirds going to be like N roads, which is speed limit is 80, so it's going to be quite slow. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Um, I'm gonna be there around uh, after 9 p.m. It's 32 degrees now. The, everything is nice and warm. The car was in the garage charging all night and day, and it was still 30 degrees in the garage. Uh, it didn't cool down at all during the night. So, I mean, I'm glad I'm not a leaf because I would have been. I would have probably half of the bars um, up. So, um, yeah, so I'll give you an update when I arrive at destination. Let's see if we have more or less than 20%. Hey guys, so uh, an update on our trip. Uh, we've done 96 kilometers. We just uh, left the dual carriageway, so we drove 110 all the way. Uh, consumption was 169 uh, watt hour per kilometer so not very good and I checked there is actually quite a lot of headwind uh, well about 30 kilometers an hour but significant enough to to make this uh, this consumption consumption not so good um, strangely though the, the estimated uh, range has increased a bit 21 percent uh, at the at arrival uh, so it's okay um, so we have another 175 kilometers to do in about two and a half hours uh, temperatures 31 degrees we went up to 33 so now it's down to 31 it's almost 7 p.m. so night should should go down a bit hopefully I mean with the AC it doesn't matter too much anyway um, uh, so yeah so that's about it uh, I'll give you an update when I arrive to destination, and I'll show you this very interesting um, AC public charger. Okay, I just arrived in Argenton, that's the name of the place. Um, I dropped my uh, my stuff, and it's just five minute walk to, uh, to, to where I'm sleeping tonight. There is 
this charging point I'm going to show you. Uh, first, uh, our trip, so 273.8 kilometers, we have 21% of battery left. 22, oh, that's weird, it's going up. <laughs> and um, we use 38 kilowatt hours, oh, back to 21. Uh, and uh, the um, consumption 13.8, despite the first bit um, of um, uh, motorway where we had like almost 170, if I remember well. Oh, it's back to 22 percent. Oh, 21. Obviously, doesn't know what to do. So that's quite good actually, because it means like most of the trip um, we're probably very close to um, to 10 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers, uh, despite a bit of um, headwind. So that's quite good. And now it's time for some AC charging overnight. It's 10 p.m. so it's going to be fully charged by 3 a.m. something obviously. It's going to be fine. Uh, what I'll do is I'll come back tomorrow morning probably um, 7 or 8 a.m. Whenever, whenever I get up I'll pick up the car. Um, the car did behave okay. I was really disappointed by the autopilot and the uh, the speed limit because the car sometimes sees the, the 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 traffic signs sometimes not sometimes adapts the adaptive cruise control to it sometimes not it's really random and the speed changes all the time 70 80 90 on those end roads here and uh, that was that was quite annoying because the car would break in the middle of nowhere for no reason with people behind that's not cool so uh, I didn't like that. On the motorway it's fine, but on the end roads where it's supposed to be okay as well, it didn't work. Now let's uh, show you the um, this very interesting charging station. Here is this charging station. That's the provider. Um, it's um, it's uh, like a local um, um, with public money funding um, network. And so, as you can see, there's something quite interesting, interesting below. So here I have to select the place. I'm going to check on the left because on the right hand side it's good old type 3 and I don't have that. Um, so I have to identify. How do I identify? With this. So I'm swiping there. My card is accepted. Now I can uh, it says I can uh, plug myself and close the hatch. So the hatch is here. You can see in there. I just put the cable in. I have to drop the phone for a moment. Closing the hatch. Now it's secured. KB secure there. And then it says that to stop the charge, I just have to um, swipe. And there is a meter there starting. So very, very easy, very straightforward. So this is working now, and I can see there on the screen that it's currently charging, and it's going to take four and a half hours to get full charge. Uh, it's getting uh, 11 kilowatt, which is great. So um, let's say it works tomorrow morning. Hopefully, we'll have a full charge. Uh, we'll need a bit of uh, of a charge. Um, and probably another charge basically before getting to Geneva. So we have still 500 kilometers to go. Um, so the car could do it in just two legs tomorrow. Good morning, guys. So it's uh, 7 30 in the morning. <laughs> I'm just walking to the car now to, to pick it up. Um, it's a nice walk. <laughs> Um, I was checking on the app, the car was 99% charging right now, so I'm not sure why. Uh, that's a bit strange. Um, maybe because of the sentry mode, uh, it was 100% put in because of the cameras. It used a bit of uh, of the, the battery, so maybe started to charge again. So, yeah, here we are. Um, my uncle told me that this, back, uh, this building next to the charging station, here we are, just right, is actually a bakery, so I'm gonna get something. Let's see now.
I have to paint it. Yeah, so I just wiped there. Oh. And it's not working. Payment accepted and the charge is stopped. Alright, we're good to go. So I just got my bread. Uh, I'm not I'm not Joe Neal and I'm not gonna eat it in front of you, but I, I got bread and pastries for breakfast. Um, uh, nice and warm. I was actually talking to Baker, he was telling me the car uh, screen w went on in the middle of the night, which probably means like 3 or 4 in the morning when they start working. So I'm not sure. Um, why? Um, I think the child would have stopped before, but just as I was saying before, maybe the, um, the the charge stopped, and then because of century mode, it used a bit of battery and then start again. And at that time, probably the the, the the screen went on just to say the charge initiated or something like this. Sorry for the microphone. Um, I. Mm, I forgot my cable at home and I actually realized I forgot also my granny cable in the city and my passport, which is uh, not handy. I've got a national ID, but it's expired, so hopefully I'm not going to be um, arrested uh, for any reason. However, I have my, um, my COVID vaccination pass thing for over two weeks, which seems to be more important nowadays. So I've got that in my mobile phone. And because that's the camera <laughs> I'm filming with, I don't think I'm going to forget about this. All right, um, so I'm 100%. Um, I'm having breakfast. I'll take a shower and off on the road to Geneva today. Here I am on the road now with the proper sound, sorry for earlier. Um, the battery is behaving a bit weird. Um, so I left with 100%, I only made 17 kilometers, I'm already down to 93%. It dropped very quickly. Um, so something must be going wrong with the BMS. Uh, I'm not sure why. Uh, because the average consumption is 16.6, .6, so it's not like I've been using a lot of whatever and being crazy actually uh, just before I was going uphill and just like I was telling yesterday it just gained a percent while going uphill which doesn't make any sense so yeah something is definitely off with the gauge I'll have to be careful with that <laughs> especially some, as you know I'm used to get close to uh, nil um, so yeah we'll see um, the battery was 100%-ish anyway, so I know I'm good for a few hours of, of driving. Uh, so I left just around a quarter past nine, uh, and I have a stretch of about 200-something kilometers. So basically half of my, uh, of my uh, trip today. And so it will be pretty much uh, midday. And what I'll do, because it's really end roads and slow roads, I'm gonna take over three hours probably to do that distance. And so I'll have lunch, I'll charge on AC. That's the plan is to find an AC charge point, uh, charge for an hour or two, just gain maybe 15, 20%. Um, but it should be, it should be enough to get me till the end of the day. Um, I will have destination charger um, so I don't need necessarily to to fast charge during the day so that's the plan anyway driving across France from the west coast all the way to Switzerland only on AC and what I'd like to show is that what I'm doing with the Tesla is not because it's a Tesla is you can basically do it with a Zoe or whatever uh, vehicle. Actually, Zoe would be a bit faster because it does 22 kilowatt on AC and all those AC charge points are, are 22 kilowatt here. Um, 
so but uh, this this is 11 kilowatt so I'm gonna charge at 11 kilowatt uh, for lunch and I did charge uh, last night at uh, 11 kilowatt now that it matters too much um, so yeah so I, I just want to show you that you can go across France like this do a long distance 800 kilometers um, across a day and a half um, easily just on AC tomorrow will be DC trip so we are about midway now uh, in, our, in our trip today um, the economy got better uh, and down to 12.2 since the charge this morning so over 217 kilometers we used only 55 percent of the battery so that's quite good um, it's it got better actually because the, it was going up and then it was quite hilly and then then it went a bit uh, a bit down also I went on a bigger road but there were roadworks, speed limit was 70, it was a long line of trucks, so I just couldn't, they're building a motorway there. And uh, so actually that got quite good because of that, I thought it would be the other way around. Anyway, 12.2 is good. Now I'm going to do some math to know how much energy I need to get to Geneva. Um, I'm not going to go through um, the motorway, I'm going to go cut through the mountains, I like to drive through the mountains, um, but I'm not sure exactly where, I'm, I've got to to measure the distance now, and so considering if it goes up, you need more energy to go up, and then you recuperate, but you still need to get to the top, that's the most important. Um, so yeah, I'll do some math now, uh, probably I just need to charge for like an hour, maybe an hour and a half, so that's that's quite good. Uh, basically in an hour I get more or less 100 kilometers of range um, at 11 kilowatts considering the, the low consumption 12.2. Since uh, since the beginning of the trip we did 552 kilometers uh, at the average of 13.2 kilowatt hours per 100 kilometers. So uh, yeah so I'll, I'll charge up a bit and then I'll be on the road again uh, for the last leg. Quick update on my charge. So I'm almost charged there. I just had uh, had lunch at a restaurant, and um, I just noticed something actually here. Since I actually stopped for a bathroom break on the way, and actually that's a consumption I did on the last 30 minutes of driving. So I was I was going slightly downhill probably on on those 34 kilometers in 33 minutes. I didn't notice that earlier. Uh, I used charge map to find this charge point. It's, it's obviously on my route and it was a, a, a free uh, charge point so that, that was nice and actually I didn't tell you so earlier today well overnight I, I just paid three euro for the, um, the charging with the contactless payment so this one is free three euro earlier it's uh, it's quite economic to go uh, through um, uh, through France right so um, I'm gonna go back on the road and stop in this town there so I'm almost, almost in Geneva I should have 23% there and then I just had a little bit to finish my trip um, yeah I just have to make sure I've got enough uh, juice at the top, uh, top of the hill on the mountains in Jura mountains and it'll be fine last thing about this charge point um, it's there are toilets just here is actually a, a camper van um, water point and, and waste point the issue is very often those charge points are located quite outside the town centers they are being given by uh, by the higher authority to the local authority that they're, 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 they're told look put a charge point here uh, somewhere in your town and they just do it they they do not they place it wherever it's uh, is the least is the most convenient for them but not necessarily the the most convenient for the for the user um, it's a bit sad I think 
it's fine because this is not iced and actually it's under some very nice trees it's in the shade so it's actually okay but it's I had I had to walk a fair bit to get to the to the restaurant area that's not where you would park if you go to the town center um, so anyway sometimes uh, what they would we call red tape and uh, and decisions are not necessarily logical and made for uh, in the best interest of the user um, all right so uh, I'll go back on the road now So I just arrived. Uh, five percent left. I don't have the charger just yet, actually. But um, I'm at my friends, and there should be a charger somewhere around town. Um, the on this leg, I did uh, 13.3 kilowatt hours per hundred kilometers on average uh, consumption. 243.8 kilometers. Done with fine. Uh, there was nice bit around uh, around the mountain. The car behaved perfectly so I really liked it <laughs> and uh, and that's it so happy about the first trip and uh, I'll give you some more uh, um, news on the next one